Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it bear tracks because that's exactly what we're seeing in the market today. The, uh, the indices took out the uh, January 24th low. The Dow actually on Wednesday closed below it and then really went down quite a bit, shattered it. And it all the indices did the same thing on Thursday morning. And then we had the big reversal. The Dow actually from low to high, Thursday's low to Friday's high, was up 5.6% on the swing. But you look at that and say, well, wow, you know, is that it? Is that the end of it? You know, get used to this. This is exactly what happens in a bear market. And uh, now I know I'm talking about the Dow, but look at what uh, Tavi Costa post, put out a tweet here on Thursday. The last 21 times the NASDAQ had an intraday reversal of plus 5% happened during brutal bear markets. Now, I'm going to take his word for it that nothing like that happened between what just happened now and all the way back into 2008. But I could tell you, and, in, and then the big decline from 2000 down to 2002, the bottom. And, you know, I could tell you where you go back and take a look at any of the charts at that time, any of the major indices, you will see lots of this kind of price action. OK, and as a matter of fact, if you go back, let me just take you back to March of 2020 and I'll, I'll pull that up. Real, well, I'll tell you what, let me just do this. Go right here and I'll show you now you just look at. You know, the reversal at the bottom here, big day, you know, and then we get a little bit of follow through on the second day afterwards. And, and that's really about it. And then we got a whole series of these, you know, snap back, you know, you move, you rally back up and then that's it. You rally back up. That's it. Same thing right in here. So this is the kind of price action. We'll see what we get on, on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, this coming week, but I am not expecting a huge move. I am not expecting this high to be taken out. I tell you, if it does, then something dramatically different is going on. But I don't believe that's going to be the case. So we'll watch and see what happens. So let's take a look at the LA Wave picture. Well, you know, let me just show you a real quick comparison because I do this almost every week. Here's what happened in the markets to. Um, why do I? Oh, I see what it did. Um, let me go back. Change. OK, here you go. Now I've got that corrected. I've got the weekly chart in here the way it's supposed to be. So the Dow was actually down. Dow Industrial was down 20 points for the week. It, it tried to come back, did not quite get back into positive territory. The S&P 500 was up 36 and the Nasdaq was up 146 at the end of the week. So again, we'll see what kind of follow through we get. You know, we've had some uh, some pretty good pretty good moves, pretty strong moves uh, to the downside. They've all taken out that January low. Let's go back and take a look at the LA Wave picture here on the Dow Industrials. So let me zoom in and take a look at this. So here's the way I'm counting it. I believe we've got one two one two. And so what am I talking about? I'm talking about Manu Wave 1. And, you know, I'm calling it Manu Wave right now. If, if it becomes super strong to the downside, we might change this to a minor. But right now I'm going to call it Manu Wave. OK, it, I'm focused mostly on the form, you know, mainly on the form, not so much on what, uh, you know, the wave labeling and whether it's a Manu Wave or a minor wave. So one, two. This tells me I'm in the third wave, third Manu wave down. Within that third wave, I am working one, two. OK, and I'm going to need to get five impulse, a five wave structure to the downside in here as a part of the third Manu wave. So that's why I'm saying that what we've got going on here is one, two, one, two. And I'm expecting this to roll over. We're getting right up in the zone. We've already retraced 50% of the first move down. And I'm looking for this to roll back over now. We'll, we'll see. Does it happen 
on uh, on Monday. Does it take a couple of days? We'll see, but that's the expectation. That's what we're looking for here with the uh, on the Dow Industrials, and it's the same exact thing on the S and P 500. All right, let's talk about a couple of indicators, and let me tell you um, just a quick update. Uh, let's take a look at the Nasdaq uh, 100. Let me pull that up. First of all, last week I talked about a target of 324. Well. We smashed right through that target with the open on Thursday morning and got down to a low of 318.26. Then we reversed back up in here with this move that happened on all the major indices. Now, I know last week I talked about how I thought that this was a fifth wave coming down and this was going to be the end of the fifth wave. But we have not seen the washout that I've been looking for also, okay? We, it's not reflected in put to call. It's not reflected in the percent of stocks below the 200-day moving average. It's not reflected in the trend. I mean, you can just go on and on and on. We did not get any kind of extreme selling capitulation with this move in here to mark the end of a first five-wave move down, which tells me that this move is still underway. And that's why I've got it as one, two in here. Uh, within the fifth wave. So the wave count that we've got is a little bit different than the Dow and the S&P. That hasn't changed. But what's changed is I don't believe the fifth wave is done. So we'll see uh, again watching for a rollover back down to the downside. Let's take a look at the put to call ratios that I was just talking about. And wow, I don't need all that space. Let me bring it back over here. What did we get? We didn't get anything at all. We didn't get any extreme or anything. I mean, we got one day uh, back here before we bottomed on the 24th. So we got a reading of 90 puts for every 100 calls. We haven't gotten anything extreme. And and I think I've shown you this before, but let me go show you what happened, you know, at the end of the third wave down in from the 2007 peak. Okay, let me go. Here, uh, uh, right here. Okay, so in, in in 2007 to 2009, the big uh, you know great financial crisis. Okay, the first move down right here. Here's that one day of a 90 plus reading. Okay, that's what we got on January 24th. Well, then I mean, sorry, that's what we got in 2022 on January 24th. Now. The third wave down, which is what we're still looking for a bottom on the Dow and the S&P uh, for the third wave. This is what happened back in 2008, January 2008. This kind of extreme one day readings. This is the 10 day moving average. And Manu, the third wave, Manu 3, uh, bottomed at that point. Well, we're not we're not even close. OK, we're just not seeing any kind of extreme fear, any kind of capitulation going on. And that's just one picture. That's just a sentiment reading coming out of the pits, Chicago Board of Options Exchange pits. And it's equity only, but that's the one I like to look at. When you take a look at the short-term trading index, we're not getting any kind of extreme in here either. When you get an extreme, you get readings above two, okay? pretty dramatic and you get closes above two. Well, we we're not seeing any of that also. OK, so we sat here and closed on Friday at uh, 0 0.8 when you rounded 0.81. And this uh, 10 day moving average hasn't even come close to getting above 1.5. So those are the things I'm watching. There's just a couple more things that I'm watching. Now, where is the 10 year yield sitting? Let me pull that up. Here's the daily. It's sitting at 1.99%. Now, this dotted zone in here is a resistance zone that I had identified a long time ago. And then you look at the weekly chart, you know, it just it shows it a whole lot better. But this is interesting. This is the highest weekly close on the 10-year yield since all the way back. You got to go all the way back over here. And it's the week of July 21st. I don't know if it's going to show it on that screen. I'm looking at another data window. July 21st, 2019, so two and a half years. 
highest weekly close in two and a half years on the 10 year yield. So I think this is going to continue to have an impact. I know the war has been in the headlines. All of a sudden, you know, it's kind of distracted from the interest rate picture and what's happening with the Fed. But I think that's going to come back into, into uh, focus here really, really quick. And we'll see what happens. It's going to start impacting, again, all, all, all these tech stocks. Now, when you look at the FANG stocks, an interesting thing, you know, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, and add Microsoft into it. The only one that is not below the 200-day moving average is Apple. That is the only one. And it came down on Thursday almost exactly to it. This was low, 152 even. It's going to be really, really interesting. I'm not expecting this to hold above the 200-day. And when this breaks below the 200-day, it's going to get really, really interesting. And maybe that's going to lead to our capitulation and the first, you know, the close of that third wave down in here. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm keeping an eye on this also. Uh, but Facebook, Amazon, Google, Netflix, Microsoft, they are all down they're below their 200-day moving averages. I mean, Facebook, Amazon, and Netflix are way below. All right, that's the end of the video for today. Uh, if you felt like it was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, hit that little subscriber channel, a little button. And uh, if you'd like to have more of this kind of information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great rest of the weekend. We'll talk to you on the next video.